in America? Oh, President Ike, Clark Gable, Madeline Munro, uh, Mickey Mouse. Personal, I mean. No one, love. I've never been there. Hmm, funny. So are you. Now ask me who I know in tooting. <laughs> it was America I was interested in. Yes, so it seems. Not tooting. Oh, I see. An interesting conversation, love. Who do you know in America? No one. Well, it makes two of us. A bit humdrum, aren't we? <laughs> Mum, have you asked Dad? Ask me what? Who do you know in America? Yeah, what is this? A new quiz game? No, Joe. Only oh, you Dad, see... Dad, can I have the stamp? Eh? What stamp? The American one. Yes, off the envelope, Joe. There's a letter behind the clock for you from America. Oh, so that's what it's all about. You wanted to know who it was from before I read it, eh? Yes, dear. But if you don't know anyone in America, seems a waste of time opening it. You open it, Dad. She's just as curious as I am. Oh? Well, now you've got me more curious than the pair of you. <laughs> Let's see where they are now. Just a minute. Just a further note to tell you I will be sailing on Friday instead of in two weeks' time. See you soon. Mamie Webb. Is that all she's written? I think so. Unless she wrote some more in invisible ink. <laughs> then what does she mean by a further note? Well, it means that we add this to the one we haven't got. Well, she says she'll see you soon, doesn't she, Dad? Yeah, that's what's worrying me. Well, it's worrying me too. Who's Mamie Webb? Oh, I don't know, love. Let me see. Webb, Webb... Never mind the Webb. What about Mamie? I don't know anyone named Mamie. Well, it's quite evident that Mamie knows Joe. Uh, here, wait a minute. This letter's addressed to Mr and Mrs Huggett. Well, you know, I always leave those for you to open. Oh, I know, but couldn't Mamie Webb be a friend of yours? Don't be silly. All my friends always told me their names. Oh, very kind of them. And there wasn't a Mamie amongst them. Hmm, it's funny. Very funny, Dad. If you don't know her and Mum doesn't know her... How on earth did she get your address? Probably from someone she doesn't know. Well, I think there's an answer to that too, Ethel. If only we'd received that first note. Now, I wonder what happened to it. It's no use, Joe. She's not an old school friend. I've been through all my old school photos and I can't find a Mamie on any of them. I'm not surprised. I can't even find you. You can't? Look, there I am, with pigtails. And that's me again on the front row. Oh, is that you? Mm, pretty little girl, weren't you? No, not very. Well, you grew up to be pretty. Oh, go on with you. You did, you know. Uh, why do you think I married you? Well, you like my steak and kidney puddings. Eh? And my apple pies. Now, I thought... And my brother lending you his motorbike, of course. And because you were the prettiest girl in the district. Oh, were... <laughs> Joe, you shouldn't say things like that. Why not? Why not at this time of night? Oh, don't you like to hear them? Oh, I suppose so. I am a woman, aren't I? Of course you are, love. Oh, Joe. Come on, old girl. Give us a plonker. Mm. Oh! <laughs> oh, sorry. Am I interrupting something? Oh, no, no. Me and your dad were looking for Mamie. Well, that's a funny place to look for her. Now, Jane, none of your cheek. OK, just you carry on. I'll see that you're not disturbed. Well, of all the blinking... <laughs> <laughs> Fancy. Oh. Oh, uh, well, I suppose I'd better put all these photos away. But I do wish we knew who Mamie was. Hello, hello, hello. Guess who? Liberace. Oh, don't be silly, <laughs> Joe. I don't need one end of the mouth organ from the other. <laughs> Here, what a lark, eh? James just told me all about it. Eh? About what? Well, about what's been going on. Oh, has she? Yeah. Oh, Joe. <laughs> You're a bright pair. You ought to be ashamed of yourselves. Oh, we're married, aren't we? Yeah, but that's no excuse. Would you know of a better one? Be your age, Mrs. H. <laughs> Listen, Fred, what's funny about it? Well, fancy getting a letter from an old friend and not remembering who she is, Joe. Oh, that. Oh. oh. <laughs> Very funny, Fred. Yeah, mind you, I don't blame old Joe for not remembering her. Eh? Well, I don't always do, does it? Yeah, are you trying to mix the pudding? Not me, Joe. No. If it had been a man, I wouldn't have blamed Ethel for not remembering. But it's a woman, so you're opening your big mouth. Yeah, yeah. No, no, Joe, did I say anything? I'm on your side, see? It's not fair to dig up a man's past. They'll have to dig you up if you don't shove off. Oh. Sorry, Joe. I, I can so. take in. I just thought I was covering up for you, that's mm. all. Tell her. Silly chump. Oh, then you do know her. Look, Ethel, I told you, until tonight I'd never even heard of her. Well, if I find out you have, you'll just wish you hadn't. Another cup of tea, Joe. You've just given me one, Ethel. Oh, sorry. I must have been cogitating. Oh. Yes, yeah, a word I picked up from somewhere. Oh. 
means turning things over in my mind. Well, don't let it give you a headache, love. No, dear. But this Mamie woman... Mum! Dad, a letter from America. Oh, another? Perhaps it's the first one arriving late. That's it, Jane. The other one was airmail. That's why it got here first. Come on, Dad, open okay, it. Okay, okay, stand back and give me room to put my thumb in the envelope. See what we say this time. Here we are. Dear Joe Huggett, will you please take your nose out of my business? What? What business? I'm talking to you, Bobby. Sorry, Dad. Oh, never mind, Bobby. Get on with it. Well, edging in like that, I found I was reading the top of his head. You are infuriating, Dad. All right, all right, wait. Now then. Dear Joe Huggett, I hope you don't mind me writing to you, but... Uh, uh, Ethel, I know her. But you distinctly told me She's you... Frank Webb's wife. Now, isn't that wonderful? Oh, not if she's married to him. I'm Joe Huggett's wife. Nothing wonderful about that either. But Frank Webb was one of the best pals I ever had, Ethel. We served our apprenticeship together. Then Frank went out to America and did very well for himself. Yes, and he got a wife, and it's wonderful. Now, perhaps you'll tell us what the letter's about. Oh, sorry, love. Just a minute. I'll uh, have a quick glance through it now. The other letter said yes, she was yes, sailing yes. for England. Yes, and she'll be seeing you soon. Yeah, that's right. She's starting a world tour and she's spending the first three weeks in England. She'd like to stay with us if we can manage it. Oh, that's nice. Be nice to have them, mm. Joe. Oh, uh, oh, well, she'll be on her own, Ethel. She lost poor old Frank three months ago. Oh, what a shame. Yeah. Anyway, if she's the wife of one of your best pals, then you know she'll be very welcome. I know she'll find things a bit difficult without her husband's wages. Oh, I don't think she'll be worried about money. I thought, look at the letter heading. <laughs> Frank Webb, Machine Tools, Inc. Branches throughout America. Gosh, with a firm like that, she'll be rolling in money. Anyway, when she comes, we'll give her a real good time. That's my girl. Take her where you take everyone to enjoy themselves, eh? Madame Two Swords. Yes, <laughs> and we'll take her to market on the steamer as well. Be a nice change for her. Yeah, not half. After a trip across the Atlantic on the Queen Mary. <laughs> Dad, I just thought of something. Yeah? She said she was sailing two weeks earlier, on Friday. Oh, lummy, so she did, it. Oh, and today's Saturday. Yeah. And she's staying with us. Jane, quick! Here, we got to get the sheets off the bed, quick! Oh, yes, the sheets. Oh. She'll be here in a few days. Oh, dear! But, Ethel, hold on a minute. Just oh, a... where's she going to sleep, Mum? Oh, in our room, I expect. I'll be with you and Bobby with his dad. But, so... Ethel, listen. Oh, come on, Bobby. We've got to get to move all your things into the dad's wardrobe. Oh, yes, Mum, and I'll move your things into mine. Come on, yes. Bobby. Oh, She's coming all the way from America, Bobby. Smashing. I wonder if she knows why I took. Look, everyone, what about me? Oh, you stay here, Joe. What for? Well, someone's got to let her in. But Ethel, she's not coming oh, for... Oh, come on, Jane. Come on, Bobby. See you later, Dad. Well, now I know I live in a madhouse. <laughs> Joe, I've just been reading through that letter again. Fancy Mamie writing to your works to see if they knew your address. Well, I told you, me and Frank Webb were apprentices together. She took a chance on me still being there. Anyway, it's nice for her to pick you out. To come and visit while she's here, I mean. <laughs> I expect I'm the only Englishman she's ever heard of. Well, you're going to make that cup of tea, love. Sure, partner. It's OK by me. Eh? Hey? Too darn tootin' it is. Well, slap me. Just dig that crazy kettle. Oh, what's all this in aid of? <laughs> it's young Bobby. Been teaching me how to talk American. Then you'd better unteach yourself quick, or Mamie won't know what the heck you're talking about. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Guess who? Oh, it's you, Fred. That's right, the voice of America. <laughs> Sam, Sam Golden. <laughs> I heard you were expecting someone over, so I've called to put my expert knowledge at your disposal, Mrs H. Very kind of you, I'm sure. Don't mention it, in case you've forgotten. If I can help somebody as I go along, then my living will right. not be all in right, vain. All right, Fred, you can right. switch off now. What's on your mind? I just heard the news, Joe, about you having an American millionaire to stay with you. What? Everyone knows about it. Wait till I get hold of young Bobby. Anyway, Joe, don't you and Ethel get in a flap about things. I can talk the language all right. No, oh, no, I heard you when you stuck that spade in your foot. No, no, American, <laughs> Joe, American. Yeah, and don't you worry about entertaining her. That's where old Fred comes in. Once old Fred comes in, we can never get... Get him out. Look, Fred, you're a nice bloke. Yeah. Have you, have you ever tried minding your own business? No, Joe, is it interesting? Here, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. now, wait a minute. Are you trying to warn me off, Joe? 
Well, that was the idea, Fred. Oh. We just want Mamie to have a nice, quiet time here. Yes, Fred. She's not a millionaireess and she's just lost her husband. Oh, sorry, Jack. I didn't understand. Mm. Oh, well, if me and Clara can do anything to make her feel happier. You'll do it like a shot, Fred. We know that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, thanks, Joe. I'll be getting back. Tell old Mrs. H. Bye, Fred. Yeah, but if she does feel like a bit of fun, Joe. You'll be ready, Fred, yes. With your false nose and your funny hat. Eh? Eh? Oh, oh yeah, that's know. it. Yeah, that's right. Anything for luck, <laughs> eh, Joe? <laughs> so long. Oh, dear. I hope Fred doesn't start interfering. Well, you know what old Fred is, Ethel? I didn't even know he'd been to America. Until he heard Mamie was coming, he hadn't. He gets around to places quicker than anyone I know. Yes, his mother must have been frightened by a magic carpet. Now, how about that cup of tea, love? Tea? Yes. Go and dig out that crazy teapot. <laughs> Was something like a meal, Ethel. What was it? A hamburger. Yes, yes it's American, Dad. Mum's practising. Yes, that's because we'll be having Mamie for a lot of meals. Oh, well, I hope she'll be very tender. <laughs> I'm a bit worried, Joe, in case she's posh and notices things. She won't notice much the way you can hide things, love. Anyway, Frank Webb wasn't posh. No, but I would like to impress her a bit. Do you think she'll like those goblins? Those which? Goblins. Why, have we got some of them coming as well? No, I mean those on the clock Aunt Mabel gave us. Oh, those? Yes, goblins. Well, so long as the clock keeps good time. Now, stop worrying, Ethel. Well, give her my regards when she arrives. I'm going out. Where? Oh, the pictures, I suppose. Jane, you're not going out without Walter Jepson. What of it? Now, you know your mother doesn't like him, Jane. Why, she'd been out with him. Now, none of your cheek, young lady. Well, I'm old enough to choose my own friends, aren't I? I don't Be like careful. him, Jane, and I don't like you going out with him. Then it's just too bad, because I do. Why, the yuck. I'll soon settle her, Ethel. No, Joe, no. Don't stop her. It'll only make things worse. Oh, all right. She'll find out her mistake soon enough. My mother didn't like you at first. Yes, but you were... What? Have either of you two any objections to me and Molly Braithwaite? Get out of it! Don't you be cheeky, Bobby. And just you go and have a wash before Mrs Webb arrives. OK. But I thought this was supposed to be a happy occasion. <laughs> Joe, when she arrives, be tactful, won't you? Yes, love. I'll make quite sure I haven't got my braces dangling. Well, I mean, she might not be feeling too bright. I've warned Bobby and Jane. Oh, I see what you mean. Oh! Joe, she's here. Eh? Look, there's a taxi outside. She's getting out. Hmm, nifted little, um, uh, oh, smart, isn't she? Joe, what do we do? Well, the first thing is to open the door. Come on. Well, 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 if you're not Joe Huggett, I'm an old granny. <laughs> well, you're certainly not an old granny, Mamie. Oh, gee, I'm glad to meet you. Let me give you a great big hug. Well, I'm here for the grabbing. Joe? <laughs> well, well, what a man. Oh, just as Frank described you with a couple of shoulders more. Good evening. I'm I reckon we're friends already. Joe? Oh, sorry, this is Ethel, my wife. Pleased to know you, Ethel. How's tricks? Nicely, thank you. Won't you come in? Sure thing, but what about this cab driver? Or don't we want paying over here? Oh, Joe will pay the taxi for you. Oh, that's mighty nice of him. It's uh, £7.15. I came straight on from Southampton. Eh? Oh, Pretty cheap, eh? Oh, come in and make yourself a turn, Mamie. Oh, thanks, Apple. Yes, and have a good look round. We'll be selling the place after I've paid the taxi. What? All the money! Oh, I didn't just say. Here. A couple of fibers okay for him. Okay, I'll get you some change. Won't be long. In here, Mamie. Oh, cute, eh? Yes, he is, isn't he? What? No, not Joe. <laughs> Your house, I like it. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it's real old-fashioned. That's just how I like them. Me too. And he's ever so good with the children. Hmm? Oh, <laughs> I didn't mean Joe. I'm in the house, honey. What's old-fashioned about it? It's modern semi -detect. Over here, maybe. Oh, but don't worry about that. I like it. Oh, very kind of you, I'm sure. And don't you try and kid me. Joe is old-fashioned. Not with that twinkle in his eye. Oh, he's got a twinkle, has he? Well, I guess there's your He-Man back again. Well, that's seen the taxi off, Ethel. Uh, come and sit on the settee, love. Joe, you know I've got a lot to do. Hey, I was talking to Mamie. Oh, Mamie. Yes, make yourself comfortable, love. Love. Oh, 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 now I really feel at home. Yes, you look it. Frank always called me love, Joe. 
And you sounded just like him. Oh, that's because we're both Cockneys, I suppose. No, no, it's the way you have us saying it, you know, as if you really meant it. It makes a woman go all... <laughs> Well, you know what I mean. Oh, I don't know, Mamie. Of <laughs> course you know what she means, Twinkle. Uh, eh? And you know something. You look like Frank, too. Oh, you, you think so? Yeah, one of those cheeky faces. You can say that again. I always did like a face with personality. And the more I look at you, Joe, the more you remind me of Frank. Well, it's nice of you to say oh, so, Oh, I mean it. Mamie. If you had black, curly hair and moustache and rimless glasses, you'd be his double. Perhaps he can go out and get some. Get some? Oh, Oh, I get it. Oh, say, your Ethel's got quite a sense of humour, Joe. Yeah, she's got to have with me around. Yes, it looks like I'm going to need it. <laughs> right. Now, just you sit back and take things easy, Mamie. We want you to have a real good time while you're here. With you to take care of it, honey, I can't miss. It won't be his fault if you do. Here, have this cushion for your back. You must be tired after your journey. Well, well, the perfect English gentleman. Yes, isn't he? I usually have to get me own. What? Perhaps you'd like a drink, Mamie. Well, thank you, Ethel. That's real nice of you. I could just do with a pick-me-up. What have you got? Tea, coffee, cocoa. Uh, oh, oh we, we, we usually take people out for a snifter. Yes, yes. saves the place being listed up with bottles. Good idea, too. That'll be great. I've been told I must not miss your old English country pubs. Where's your nearest? About 20 miles away. My, my, what do you do when you get thirsty? We drink tea. Oh, I guess I'm not over fond of tea. But I would like a nice cup of something. Well, there's coffee, cocoa, orangeade, barley water. Oh, let me see. Do you percolate? Beg pardon? She wants to know if you percolate, Ethel. I know. Do you think I percolate, Joe? Well, I've never noticed it. When you make your coffee, Ethel. Do you use a percolator? Oh, no, I use a saucepan. Oh, Joe, that's terrible. You mean to say you allow her to do that? I've been doing it for him for 25 years and he's never objected. Well, turn me over backwards. Eh? I guess you must be the easiest going husband in the world. What a lucky woman you are, Ethel. Well, there's no need to make him into a martyr. He's quite capable of doing that himself. Well, I reckon one of my first jobs here is going to be to show Ethel how to make coffee. What? Now, now, don't get the needle, Ethel. Americans are expert at making coffee. It's very kind of Mamie to offer to show you. Oh, is it? Yeah. Then I think I'd better show Mamie how to make tea. I think I'll just settle for a glass of orange juice, Ethel. It's orange aid. Oh, what's the difference? Well, you'll find out after you've tasted it. I'll go and get it for you. Yeah, I'll have one as well, Ethel. And make mine strong. You know something, Joe? I like Ethel. I think she's sweet. I know. Oh, I'm glad. I'm yeah. glad. Yeah. And now come and sit next to me and tell me all about yourself. OK. Oh, I say, these city springs aren't as strong as they were. You better have this other cushion. And now just oh. lean forward a bit while I put it behind you there. Thanks. <laughs> Mamie! Oh! Do you want it hot or cold? What's up, Ethel? Oh, nothing. I'll, I'll take mine cold with ice. Ice? Yeah. Oh, you should never drink orange without ice. When you haven't got a fridge, you've got to. What, do you mean to say you don't have an ice box? Well, how do you manage about cold chicken and things? Easy. We never have them. Well, I'll make your orange aid as cold as I can. I'll let the tap run a bit. Oh, excuse me a minute, Mamie. I'll sure. just give Ethel a hand to carry it in. Oh, Ethel, you want a hand? I can manage, thank you. Oh, what's the matter with you? That woman, who does she think she is? But Ethel, she just told me how much she likes you. She doesn't have to tell me how much she likes you. It's sticking out a mile. But she thinks you're sweet. She must do. She's been calling me honey ever since she arrived. Uh, don't be silly, love. Look, you're imagining things. No, I'm not. First my house is old-fashioned, then you've got a twinkle, then I don't percolate. Eh? Yes. And then she wants to show me how to make coffee. And now I can't even make a glass of orangeade. But Ethel, She look may have oh. plenty of money, but she's no right to make us look small by telling us we ought to have a fridge. But she doesn't mean anything, Ethel. It's just what she's used to. We've only just got to try and understand her. Well, you're doing your best, aren't you? Sitting on the settee with your arm round her. I was just giving her another cushion. Oh? Well, she oh, got a very no. satisfied look on her face just for getting a cushion. Oh, e Ethel... Mamie's only just arrived. She's so pleased to see us so friendly. She'll be all right once she's settled down. Well, that's what's worrying me. Once she's settled down, she'll be interfering in everything. Oh, don't be so silly. What's going on in here? Are you growing your own oranges? Uh, oh, no, Mamie, no, no. <laughs> I couldn't screw the top off the bottle. So he asked me to do it for him. Uh, eh? Is this 
this your kitchen, Ethel? Well, couldn't be very well much else, could it, Mamie? Well, I guess you're pretty brave to cook for a whole family in such a pokey little place. What? Oh, that's a compliment, Ethel. Oh. Oh, well, so long as I'm brave. I'm fancy having to clean brass taps. Well, oh, they were in the house when we got it. Well, <laughs> you ought to be ashamed of yourself, Joe. Why don't you get chromium ones for her, you great big hunks? Eh? See? Now do you believe me, Joe? <laughs> Have a heart, Joe. What are those poor little green flies done to you? Oh, nothing, Fred. It was me roses that complained about them. <laughs> Here, Joe, um, did I see Mamie out in the garden in a bathing costume yesterday? If, if you didn't, then you're the only man in the row. <laughs> What a girl, eh, Joe? <laughs> yeah, Clara tells me she owns a big firm in America. That's right. Frank Web Machine Tools, Inc. Inc? What's the ink for? Oh, I expect it to sign her checks with me. Yeah. I say, her old man must have had a brain ache to get on like that. Ooh. Yeah, talking of getting on, do you think they'll make you head foreman at the work when old Tyler leaves? Not a chance, Fred. Joe! Yes, I thought. Can I see you a minute? Yes, come over and have a good look. <laughs> What's wrong, Mrs H? Did you think he was leading Mamie up the garden path? Yeah, she wouldn't need much leading, Fred. <laughs> no, I thought. Yeah, real live wire, ain't she? It's funny to see all the curtains open when she does the Munro wiggle down the road. What's funny about it? Well, to see all the men looking at. <laughs> <laughs> well, it makes a change from the women, Fred. Yeah. <laughs> Still, it'll do the neighbourhood good to be shaken up a bit. Yeah, she'll shake them up all right if she keeps tripping round the garden in that bathing costume. You mean that flimsy blue? Thing. I didn't notice the colour, Mrs. H. She got her back to me. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen the blokes around here work so hard in their gardens before. <laughs> Nor me. <laughs> you can talk. I saw you water your tomatoes three times in less than half an hour. Well, they were thirsty. They weren't the only things whose tongues were hanging out. Oh, well, you said you wanted to see me, I thought, What about? It's private. Aye, aye. Shall I bury me in the compost heap? No, we'll go indoors. But you've got something there, Fred. It's a good idea. Hey? All right, come on, Ethel. I'll see you later, Joe. Well, what's on your mind, Ethel? Mamie. Oh, what again? She knows we don't want Jane to go out with Walter Jepson, so she's decided to interfere by encouraging her. What? Yes, yeah, she's talking to her now. Hello there. Oh, Jane and I had a swell chat, Ethel. I told her all the answers. I should think you know them. Yeah. I told her how I used to make Frank take me to dinner before a show and then to supper afterwards with chocolates in between. Oh, made me feel kind of hungry all of a sudden. Do you like me to boil you an egg? Say, that gives me an idea. How about you and me and Joe stepping out for a real party? You know, hit the high spots a bit. I've got some ironing to do. No, oh, forget the ironing, Ethel. Lummy, a night out will do you good. You haven't <laughs> got a shirt for tomorrow. Uh -uh. You go if you want to, Joe. Well, I reckon a party's not much fun on my own. Sure you don't mind me borrowing him, Ethel? Of course she doesn't. I'll go and get changed. Me too. The party's on me, Ethel. We'll bring you a balloon bag. Oh, dear. I never thought he'd go. <laughs> Mum, how long's Aunt Mamie staying? Another two weeks. Why? She gets on my nerves. Always interfering. We were playing rounders. She said we, we were doing it all wrong. So she had to start showing us how they play baseball. Oh, dear. Can't she leave you alone either? She gets on your nerves as well, doesn't she, Mum? Well, sometimes. Is it because she keeps making Dad fuss over her? I suppose he does a bit. Won't you feel happier when she goes and lets Dad ignore you as usual? Bobby, your dad never ignores me. He doesn't fuss over you. Well, that's different. I don't expect fuss from your dad. No, he's got too much sense. That'll do, Bobby. Just you go in the front room and finish your homework. OK. Even Bobby's noticing how he fusses over her. Well, of all the interfering so-and-sos... Why, what's wrong, Joe? Mamie. Fred happened to mention to her about me being in line for the head foreman's job, so she went straight to the works to put a good word in for me with the boss. You mean she interfered and lost you the job? No, Campbell gave it to me, but I didn't half feel a fool. He said she'd talked him into it. Why doesn't she mind her own business? She's done the same thing to Jane, given her big ideas, and now it's all broken off between her and Walter Gipps. Mum, Dad, you ought to see Aunt Mamie. She's a smasher. What? She's bought a baseball set for all the boys. You ought to see her slugging them. 
Everyone thinks she's squirrel. See you later. Well, she seems to have pleased someone at last. Mum, I'm going over to Sally's. I won't be late. Oh, Jane, I'm sorry about Mamie interfering between you and your boyfriend. I'm not. She's swell. She showed me what he was really like. See you later. Oh, that's certainly a change of face, I must say. Hmm. Ethel, people usually get annoyed when people interfere because they mess things up, but didn't we both want Jane to break off with that bloke? Yes, of course we did. And you wanted that job, too, didn't you? Yes, I did. And I, I must admit, the coffee does taste better percolated. Yes, and Bobby seems to like baseball better than rounders. Yes, perhaps some people are good at interfering. Well, she certainly doesn't seem to have done any harm by it. No, she seems to have done a lot of good. Perhaps we've misjudged her, Joe. Gee, I'm all out of breath. Oh, those kids sure gave me the run around Ethel, but we had a lot of fun. So Bobby said. He thinks you're swell. So does Jane. Gee, I'm glad Jane thinks that, especially after I got rid of her boyfriend. Hey, you mean you made her break it off? Well, I figured if you did it, she'd have been real mad at you. But with me, so what? I'll be away in a fortnight anyway. Fancy. She risked Jane not liking her, Joe, just to well pass. Yes, and another thing. What did you say to my boss at work? Me? Nothing, Joe. I just asked him if he could spare you, that's all. Said I'd like to offer you a job in America. He just said it was no dice and uh, he'd offer you a promotion to stay. Mamie, you've been interfering on purpose, haven't you? Oh, I wouldn't say that. You had a few problems and as Frank always told me, it's often easier to let someone outside step in and settle them for you. Mamie, you're a marvel. <laughs> oh, seems wrong, Joe, but I find that if you have money, people will tolerate you. I'm now eccentric where I used to be impolite and witty where I used to be rude. Mamie, I'm not arning tonight. You're not? No. How about us all stepping out for a real party? Oh, 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 oh yeah. yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry she's leaving tomorrow, Joe. Yeah, me too, Ethel. She's been a real sport. Yes, we'll miss her, Ethel. They collected her bags this afternoon. No. Her husband must have been a nice man. Frank? Oh, yes, he was. Must have been. She said he was like you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I won't like saying goodbye, Joe. No, but it's got to happen, Ethel. Mum, I just went to see if Mamie was in her room and I found this note for you and Dad. Note? Funny. Let's see what it says. Dear Ethel and Joe, thank you both for a wonderful time. Please forgive me for not saying goodbye. I'm not very good at it, so I've decided to catch the night plane to Paris. Joe, she's gone. Oh, wait a minute, Ethel, there's a P.S. P.S. Sorry I was so brash when I first arrived. My don't care a hang was because I'd made this trip to try and forget about Frank. By helping me to remember him, you showed me how wrong I was. That's the only way I'll ever be happy. Love to you all, Mamie. Well, love. I know how she feels, dear. I'm glad we helped her to remember Frank. Me too, love. And I'll tell you one thing. We'll never forget Mamie. Thank you.